Hey everybody, how are you doing? I just got distracted. I was really vibing off the <laughs> off the intro music today. I don't know why. And then I just <laughs> forgot to do all my jobs. I was just like jamming along. What's up everybody? Welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn and I'm here with the man, Dale Bajini. How are you, man? I'm doing good. Thank you, Flynn. Thank you for uh, thank you for joining us. I'm gonna play some music, which I also almost forgot to, to get started. <laughs> Starting off real well. Um, but hey, we're here for an hour. We're gonna be hanging out, we're gonna be talking about illustrated logos um, and we were just chatting before the stream like what is the difference between like an illustrated logo and like a normal logo all that sort of fun stuff so we're going to get stuck into that who's here with us in chat we've got Johanna looking after us that is awesome um, Ariana lovely to see you r and in the house um, Kira Ora Steve um, wonderful to see you as always I hope you guys are having a wonderful day it is cooking here in the studio um, but uh yeah, it's a lovely day. How's everything out where you are, Dale? Uh, a little bit the same. I, I just closed the door in the studio and I've just blocked all the air conditioning, so it's getting hot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what I don't know what the move was there. I just uh, I thought it was making too much noise, but anyway, it's good. Everything's good. Nice one. All right. Very, very, very <laughs> good. Yeah, great to see you guys. So I thought um, it's been a while since we've had you on. In fact, actually, last time we were on, we made we made this. You made yes. this. You made this show. Let me see. Yeah, I don't know if you can yeah. see that, but uh, I'm repping the merch, repping the merch, uh, which is which was super cool and heaps, you know, really fun. So if you want to check that stream out, that was great. We did like a, you know, beginning to end, like kind of whole process looking at, you know, illustrating and designing for t-shirts. Um, but also yeah. we were chatting about like printing process and like how you set your file up and all that sort of useful thing. So if you've ever wanted to design a t-shirt and you want to check that out, go check it out on the YouTube channel um good times and today we thought we'd do good. another like really practical one which was around yeah illustrated logos like um, yeah you know what they are did you i think you said you had an example to show us um, um yeah over so on i'm website. just gonna i'll drop into my folio here nice one. um so i guess like i was saying to you earlier I, it's hard to define what the difference between an illustrated logo versus a, i guess a traditional classic logo whatever you want to call it a corporate logo um a lot of my clients specifically um they like to have some kind of fun elements to it and it's always usually a skull but let's <laughs> we won't, we won't talk about that too much but um this example is probably how i can best describe what i see fit um with illustrated logos, it's obviously got like an illustrated component within the logo. And it's also been illustrated in a style that can be broken up into um, using that main hero graphic, which we can see here, the Old mm. Reapers logo. So it's got like, we've got our illustrated component. We've got the logo, um, the, the shop name, but it, it can be broken down into like a text only um, a mono version, but then I can pull like elements like the slide out and, mm. you know, I can really use that one graphic that I've composed to make a whole different range of merch without having to recreate a whole bunch of other assets because I've already got them there. They've been drawn in a way that I can um, yeah. pull them all out and things like that. So, yeah, I think it's. I guess the difference is like the corporate logos are usually a little bit more as I mean, I don't want to downplay that, that other style. Like I just don't do a lot of it. Um, I would say it's more like a graphic design, um, a graphic design led graphic where this is definitely, um, illustrated, uh, illustration led. So, um, mm. I, and I think it, it's also, a, 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 a I guess it comes down to clients as well. Like I, I yeah. do a lot of clients with uh, 
much more, I guess, alternative culture. So like um, they're usually clothing brands, um, barbershops, like um, the, the bands and things like that. So logos, when, when I'm coming up with them, aren't necessarily meant to, you know, s- stand strong as like a independent little, you know, um, like a El Reapers text only thing. Like people want a little bit more bang for buck. So I think mm. this is a good way to get a logo that works as a, a shop graphic or um, shirt graphic, things like that, stickers and stuff. But it can also be dialed down to go on promotional material as just copy and things like that. So, yeah, I think that would be my justification. Um, Whether or not it's correct, um, we'll leave that to the people to decide. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah, and I'll just go, we'll we'll just talk about kind of the process that leads to kind of this exact well not this exact logo but this kind of format um yeah. we're going to talk about barbershop logos and things like that yeah sweet awesome and hey i'll just yeah. mention as well we're here for an hour so we're not going to do a q a break or anything so if you do have questions as we're going through this just drop them straight in chat we'll we'll get around to them yep yeah. uh, so jackie was just asking in chat do we ask questions here that's exactly right so yeah if you're ever on yeah. youtube watching or anywhere else watching this um, the chat that we're using today, the live chat, will be behance.net slash live. So just log in with your Adobe ID and let us know what's up. And also say hi. Um, Ariana's from Southern Cali. Um, Dale and I are both from Sydney. Uh, mm-hmm. I know Steve is in New Zealand. Let us know where you're from, what's going on. Um, we hope, you, hope you're having a good day. Hope you're having a good time. And um, let us know any questions around the process or also if you have questions for Dale around, you know, um, freelancing and, you know, illustration yeah. or anything off topic, feel free to d- throw it in chat. Friendly, safe space today. Um, yeah. So did you, are you starting from scratch or do you have some steps prepared? Because I know we don't uh, have a we've ton got of time. Some, yeah, we've got um, steps prepared as per Clever. always. So I'm going to jump into Photoshop. Smart man. <laughs> All right. um, I, I definitely don't think we're going to see a finished artwork, but I definitely want to just talk through the process and kind of, you know, how to, how to get there. Cause I think, um, everyone knows how to finish an artwork, but just what, what are the steps involved to get this illustrated logo? So, cool. All right. So I'm just going to go from the top. Um, so concepts as per always, they're always very important, very rough, very, um, quickly put down on onto paper or digital whatever you want to do no yeah. no one's better than the other so i like to do everything digital or that's my my go-to so basically i like to when i'm composing these logos and and basically like these concepts i always want to do a mixed range so i won't do just all circle shapes um you can see here i've got like an arc shape or a gravestone shape sorry yeah right then there's like um vertical rectangle um a bit more of a portrait uh, sorry portrait and landscape versions here um text led so like i would hero the text more than the illustration mm. um then i do like always have a shield version i don't know why they're just kind of I just feel like they're appropriate for a lot of like the logos that I, I work on, especially with yeah. the, the shops and, you know, they look nice as labels, they look nice as stickers um, and a classic circle. So I don't, I try not to worry too much about the, the look of anything. You can see they're really rough, but I also think um, I like to think of the elements that go along with each logo. So how do these break apart? So I try to make the design, I'm thinking about the design later on down the track, like can I pull this barber's brew out of this um, gravestone and make it work standalone? Um, yeah. Maybe not, maybe it looks a bit odd, um, depending on, um, I guess, where we're putting it. It, it could look cool as just a um, front print if it was just the the, art, uh, the, the gravestone kind of shape. But um, that, this uh, the schooner one can I pull out these little components and make do anything with these little skulls or scissors and uh, I love that one the, I love the floating like it, items yeah, that's so great for a barbershop like that's super cool well, and I mean I think you got to have fun with this stuff right like you want to you want to put something on the table that's not just your standard um or yeah. traditional typography typography is beautiful and it always will be like um especially for tattoo shops and um a lot of barber shops they do opt for strong typography that's usually very like 
you know, ornate or cursive or anything like that. But I like to, you know, mix it up. So I'll have like I'll throw in a little quirky one like that or this circle one where the, the, the skeleton's having a, a bit of a chug. Um, but yeah, everything that I draw, I'm... Um, sorry, I'm having trouble oh. hearing you. Sorry, my watch. <laughs> is that Siri? My watch is... Yeah, my watch is... Siri's, got an, Siri's got an opinion on... Um, illustrated logos for us today. <laughs> no, no one wants to hear from me, all right? <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I like to, the, the overall kind of theme is, I guess, having some forethought to how you can break apart this logo and treat it as, yeah, you can have it as a whole shirt design or I can have it as um, business cards and, you know, we might need a less detailed version. So can we do a low detail and a high detail version if need be? Um, but yeah, that would be conceptually what I'm thinking about at this point. Um, and drawing it basically just with anything, whatever you want to draw, you can draw with whatever brush you want. It's, it's not important at the moment. Um, but I'm just going to stick to this, um, the shield one, just because, um, it's a little bit it's going to be the quickest one to probably compose cool but um so we're just going to go from there and then i'll start having so i've got all my stuff layered down here i don't it's i'm sure it's really small and yeah you so you're working you're, you're working on like a billion pixel like yeah <laughs> in a in your giant um giant wacom tablet yeah it's it even looks small for me, so I'm sure it's small for you guys, <laughs> but it, it's it's very cleanly um, and neatly layered here. So I've got, that was my concept layer. Um, and then I've got like, so I know that this is our, this is our guy here. This is the one we're going to use. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to circle it so everyone can see that. Nice one. Uh, hey, we've got um, na um, asked where people were from. Um, Nano's mm -hmm. from Spain. That's so cool. Um, Andy Wright is in the chat. What's up, Andy from Never right, Creative? Andy. Good to see you, mate. Hope you're having a wonderful Friday. You're also in Sydney. Um, Ruth is in Tassie. Beautiful. Lovely to have um, you here. Thanks. All right, so this is our. This is us. We we've approved this. Tick. So, would you ever show yeah, the client this, or is this for you? This stage, um, the the concept stage, yeah, yep. or this stage yeah, right I, here, what we can see. Yeah, I, I would definitely show the client all of this. Yep, and and they would get to to pick and choose. And a lot of the times, I've I've noticed recently, um, they will like this one, this one, and this one, and then they'll say, "But can we get all of those into here somehow?" So. It's, it's nice to have these options because they might like the text in this one. They might mm. like the, the skull in this one, but you gotta you need to be able to flex a little bit. And I haven't got a second round of concepts drawn, but you might go back and revise the design to incorporate that. So they've got a little bit of play at this point, but um, after the second round, it's kind of, that's where I like to secure the, the design, which is yeah. where I'm gonna go right now. So I would start drawing the assets. So I know that I need the skull, shield, banner, um, the straight razor, and some copy. The the text. I so this is a this is off um, Adobe Type Kit. So this is just a standard font. Um, but I might not use it standard like this all the time. So I'm going to have to warp it because obviously in my concepts of got like a bit of a warp in the banner yeah there's like this lower arc thing happening here so i'll put it all my assets here kind of just put them down so that i know that i've got a more separate so that if i need to to move anything like it's real easy at this point and then i'll do a composition with it so i'll get all those elements put them in um i'll get the type layer and rasterize it and get the shapes that i want um and I'll quickly just do that just in case anyone's wondering. Nice. So I would just literally <laughs> just copy that layer and rasterize it. And this is just this is how I would do it. And then I'll just um, stretch and warp how I, how I want. Oops. Let's pull 
this down. Nice, pretty quick, pretty easy. Yeah, real quick. Nothing, nothing fancy. And also, I think it's good to like these are great fonts. Um, uh, both uh, wherever you buy your fonts or download them, it doesn't matter. Um, most of the time, I don't keep them very standard. Um, I, and I did do this in the All Nighters graphic. If you want to go back and look at that, where we used the um, we used the font that I found and we added to it and deleted yeah. things. So, you know, I kind of put your creative flair in it just to just to really make it your own. Mm. Um, so yeah, I would warp it, put it on, and then we get this composition together. So that's the, the rough composition. So now I know everything's there. Um, and in this composition, it's still, it's still all layered. I can still move and scale things if I want. So I'd show them this was this would probably be their second, or well, this would be the refined layout that they would see just to, to kind of get their head around because obviously looking at the the concept layout it's very it's very rushed they, they might not have faith in the in the art form so this gives them a better idea and then I would then once we've got a I guess an approval on the layout I'd just just fill it in a little bit and, and get some of like these extra little details so they know those X's in the background are just so I know that it's going to be a black background. So, mm -hmm. Excuse me. Sorry, I'm a bit fluey. No worries, mate. Um, Jackie's saying, yeah, so, wow, wow, that's easier than I've been doing it in Illustrator. The text. Uh, warping, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the Photoshop way is good because it is quite fast. And if you do the, the the text, I guess you can do the text at um, if you're using it at a high enough res, you can get it to a point where you've got it all warped, do a live trace in Illustrator, and then you've still got a vector a vector mm. format that you can manipulate over there. But um, I won't go too much into the switching of programs. I just will, will stay true to Photoshop today. But yeah, it is Photoshop's engine's a little bit faster in terms of um, the warping here. But also Illust Illustrator's got a heap of them anyway. It's just yeah, I think all the paths and pixels, ah, sorry, pixels, um, the anchor points and stuff. If there's too many, it starts the file starts having a bit of a, a seizure. Yeah. But yeah. Hey, just on the nice. um, just yeah. on the uh, the concept, we saw six that time. But Johanna was asking, how many variations do you generally send through to a client? Uh, honestly, I would try to keep it at like six. I feel like that's a it's a just a nice number. Um, you don't want to overstress yourself out either with having to do ten concepts you know you're like if, if you've got it in you and you know that you've you can pump out that many that that's fine um i've sometimes submitted two um I, i'll do you know it, it's not always six but six is my absolute like maximum yeah i just feel like if i give them too many options i'm starting to confuse them as well and yeah. if they don't have a clear direction, it can really complicate it and slow it down a little bit. So I try to make this as easy as a process as possible. But like I said, they can go into this one and if they they can see these six, they can pick and choose yeah. um, elements. And, you know, maybe they want the circle shape, but they want this skull. But can we have this text on the bottom? That's fine because I've already got all those in my head that I was going to draw them. So yeah. As long as you're confident with the, the concepts that you send, I think th then you, you should be able to send between two and six is plenty, I think. Yeah. Do you ever find that they one. pick one? Do you ever find that they pick one? You're like, damn, I wish I didn't pick that one. Oh, all the time. That's just, that's <laughs> mur murky law. It's like, I'll do one and I'm like, oh, it's all right. And it's probably my least favorite. So out of these ones, yeah, I'd probably do the, the schooner glass because it's fun. Yep. But 100% they'll pick the, the typography only one right. and it'll just be like, ah, oh, well, that's no fun. But hey, that's they're, nice. if they're paying, then it's, yeah, it's their, their decision. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, <laughs> excuse me. So yeah, this is, this is where I would get it to as let's call it the, the stage two of the concept. So this would be like where we've gone back well we've gone back with feedback to to compose this this graphic i guess 
So this logo can work as a logo as far as I'm concerned. This is, you can use this as a logo or you can use it as a shirt design. It's all the same. My, the only thing is maybe they still want to use this skull or just the, the blades and the writing. So I'll start drawing with that in mind. So I'll draw everything separate again. So this would be me inking it. So I'm going to have to really quickly ink this in. Steve has a great question. Um, does it help to ask clients what they want to put the logos on? Like for example, shirts, yes, hats, yes. like the front of windows, ads and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I was going to say. So if, if I do this, I'm going to draw this part really quickly just to show you basically like the level that you could, you can put in. So. Oh, good. Okay, let's just draw this in. So you've just used the symmetry tool there? Yeah, this is going to be done with symmetry. Nice. Because of um, sending the smoothing up so it's not so jagged. Um, so if I do all these details and then I find out that the, the client wants to put this on, let's say a hat or they want to embroider there's nothing to say that the embroidery won't come out good, but also there's a high chance that it will lose a lot of the detail. So generally I will ask up front, um, yeah, where is it going? Like, uh, is this design on dark garments or light garments? Um, yeah, embroidered stickers. What, what exactly is the actual, the output for all, or like for all variants of it? Um, and if they do say they want smaller, I guess, smaller placements, then instead of doing a full detailed one, I might compose like a, a, like a smaller version where it's like, I wouldn't put all these details in. Mm. So I, 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 I'm kind of thinking like by this point, you would already know that the, the client wants, um, some embroidery or anything done. So I'd be prepared to. I guess draw a couple of variants of this just so that they can get the, the better output when it goes to those smaller formats. That definitely does help to know, but some clients don't know until the very end anyway. Yeah. They're like, Oh, actually we want to do this as well. Do you think you could do a, a version for a, you know, a embroidered hat or something? Yeah. And do you have people like you, maybe you've created some, some illustrations like very specifically. And then I don't know, a year later or six months later, they're like, Oh, Hey, we want to, we want to get some hats made or something and come back to you. Or do they, um, um you know, yeah, like, sometimes oh, I might need to redraw it, you know, for what you yeah, want to sometimes do. Sometimes if, if they know that they have to pay again, um, because it's outside of that initial brief, I guess, um, yeah. they usually don't, uh, uh, most people don't want to obviously, like budgets are important to everybody. So um, I like to do it upfront as like a courtesy thing anyway. So I would ask them to try to eliminate that need or at least inform them that maybe they should consider that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. Like, so I, yeah, I definitely am always trying to like pre-plan and, and have things like good to go for, for all sorts of, um, I guess, production styles. But yeah, like you said, down the track, they can come back and go, oh, we weren't really going to do this, but what, do you think we could have this? So I got to be like nice. I, I'm, I'm a pretty nice guy. I, I usually just end up doing it. But sometimes <laughs> if it's, if I know it's going to take a whole day, I need to charge for it. So yeah, they, they usually don't want to. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So yeah, I'm just going to. We were chatting about Illustrator sort of versus Photoshop for this sort of stuff. Johanna yeah. has a question. Any reason why you're using Photoshop for this when a similar design could possibly made in AI with like the blob tool? And I guess it's just the idea of, of course, if you make something in vector, it could scale up to wherever. So what's yeah. the thought process between when you, because I know you use both between choosing one and yeah. the other, Photoshop or Illustrator? Um, I think my, my thought process, um, and, and it's changed a lot lately, um, I used to be very pro um, Illustrator for, for the longest time. So I was always like, nah, Illustrator for everything. Um, but now 
I guess the way I draw in here versus how I draw in Illustrator is exactly the same. So she's she's very correct in saying that it, it can be done in Illustrator. I kind of like having control of the layers. <laughs> I like being able to put things in folders. It's all like it's really neat. Everything in Photoshop's a really neat setup. Mm. Um, also, I... I know that I can work at a higher DPI and if you set up your live trace well enough, you can just do a live trace over in Illustrator later. So I never feel like, oh, I should have done that in Illustrator because it would have been so much better right. to have it as a vector because I guess I know I know the out that I guess the outcome I'm trying to achieve through this this graphic. So I know that it's not a high detail thing. So I'm only going to send like a, a really like this drawing would be the extent of the detail for this. And I know live trace can handle it, but it's definitely a person, um, a personal choice. But yeah, I do like the fact that, um, um, Photoshop still has the layers and, and you can control it a bit easier, but definitely, um, I was the illustrator buff for like, for the longest time I used to not really come into Photoshop for finished art, but now mm. it's, we've spoken about this before. It's just, everything's come such a long way and printing isn't like, it doesn't need to be vector to be, um, sent to print. It can be a PSD. It can be a yeah. high res JPEG, whatever. It's, it's crazy. And it's still, it, it blows my mind that it's come that far actually. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I'm just quickly. What about you guys in chat? I'm curious, is anyone like just fully illustrator, like all the way, or is, is everyone working in Photoshop? And you don't have to be an illustrator to answer that question either. Just what's like, what's your no, most that's... opened app or like, what do you spend most of your time in? I'm super curious. Yeah, I reckon, I reckon mine is definitely 50, 50 still. Mm. Yeah, so Jackie, yeah, Jackie in chat is saying, um, I've never drawn in Photoshop before. Oh, really? Yep. And is like, has Jackie only ever done illustrated drawings like that? Like not even concepts or roughs or anything. That's good question. Seems more I mean, dynamic than what like... I can achieve in AI. Uh, know, check it out. I definitely think they both have their pros and cons. We all know, we all know that. Mm. But I also think that Photoshop just has like, I don't know, there's so many brushes, there's so many, <coughs> excuse me, there's so many textures and stuff like that, that I don't know, just like, it seems right. Like it seems like it's the right thing to do. <laughs> in my computer. Johanna um, says switching between Fresco and Photoshop, depending where I'm drawing from, like couch or a desk. Um, okay, fair Ariana enough. flips between AI and Photoshop a lot, depending on what I'm trying to do. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely um, project specific, right? Like you wouldn't create a catalog in um, Photoshop, you'd use InDesign. Um, right. You know, like, I, I just feel like it's definitely, definitely a, a project specific question, but for the most part, illustration can go both ways. I think, um, that's the, the age old, uh, argument, isn't it? Which mm -hmm. is, which is preferred. So I guess, so what I'm doing, I've got all these, all these things in layers over here. So I've got all my assets still individually placed in. So I guess what I'm trying to show you is if I've got my final design, but then they want to do like just a, uh, like a type only version, then I can pull, I should have used the wrong one, sorry. So I can do this type only version. So instead of having just this as their logo, cause I would have all these elements drawn separate. I've now got like an illustrated version of the logo, which is, it can be their hero graphic on shirts and things like that. 
This is um, the blades of uh, bugging me, so I'm just gonna get rid of this one here. Yeah, so I've got a, a hero graphic that can go on shirts or whatever else, but then I can also start pulling away um, the text to have a text version like that. Um, I can have the like a skull and um, oh, what's going on? Let me look at it. I could have like a skull only, mm. you know, and and maybe the 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 blades can come out. So. I've drawn all these elements, but they all kind of can create a whole bunch of logos, I guess. So like yeah. being an illustrated logo, like you're not, you're not tied to just having that one version of the graphic. So I can make all these other versions and just, I don't know what is that look like. Yeah, that's oh, cool. And also like for the little... client, it's not just that single, like just the single thing to scale up or scale down. Well, You've just got all these different, like interesting things that have that same yeah. connection um, to the original. Well, yeah, that's, and I think that's the best way to put it is that you've got like all these variants that you can't, I guess for me, I like to, I'm a pretty honest and fair person. If I've already drawn all this stuff, and I know there's other solutions within this design that I can present and, and throw in as a, a logo pack, then your time and your, the money that you've quoted should be able to include this sort of stuff. Like you shouldn't just say, hey, here's this graphic, enjoy. Because mm. you know for a fact that it, it might not work well on a business card. If I scale this down heaps, I'm going to lose a lot of it. But I know that the text alone looks like it's strong, like I can use this graphic yeah. um, on its own, or this would look cool on my Instagram profile picture, you know, the just the, the skull or something. Yeah. So it's, I guess it's, it, it makes you more valuable as an artist, I guess, if you can mm. provide a company or provide a, a, a brand some solutions that they may not have, I guess, envisioned in that initial when we presented the, the concepts they yeah they see this and they like that but i know that i can pull out a whole bunch of elements and create individual logos and make a logo suite i guess mm. um just like a corporate logo would have like the the stack version uh, um a horizontal version a black or white you know you when you design a logo you make a logo pack right so Mm. When people ask me, oh, I'm looking for a logo for my, my barbershop or for, for this beer company, you know, I want to provide them with enough elements that, well, here's your text version, here's your icon only, and mm. here's, here's your overall hero graphic, I guess. Um, maybe I, I can't call this a logo. Is there a rule that I can't call this a logo? But <laughs> I, I don't know. No, I, I, no and... I, I call it a logo, an illustrated logo, because this is the one that they that they're, they're purchasing. This is the the one they vision the most as their their hero graphic. All I'm doing is being a bit smart and trying to utilize the elements within this design mm. to to create a whole like a series of graphics, and and it's kind of like endless to the point where you can do as many of these little variants as you want. But realistically, you already, you had this plan from the very start. Anyway, when you, when you draw it, mm. like I was already under the impression, I was already aware that I was going to be using parts of this graphic in my head in, in individual circumstances. So I, I think it's smart to, to create everything individually and, and I could have just went in and started sketching this, illustrating it. But what if later on they want to change out the um, the blades and they want to put like scissors and combs? So I've allowed for that to be able to happen easily as well. Um, again, this is not a Illustrator Photoshop question. This is um, what's like you know what what are the what can I take out of this graphic to make several graphics or several little designs and stuff like that and moving mm -hmm. forward how can I utilize this if they do come back like you said Flynn 
and we want to do something with this graphic but a little bit different so I've already got it in a format that I can pull it apart and have some fun with it I guess yeah no, that's cool so yeah it's a, it's I think it's 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 a good way to and you know like this is all very rough but you, you can see what I mean about like creating these separate little logo suites or logo variants that yeah can go on uh neck tags of shirts if you want this could be a, a beer label this one mm. uh profile pictures um stickers and it's all come out of one design so i haven't really there's no point in me saying it took any extra time to do all this because if i draw it all in layers as an illustrated logo like this all i'm doing is pulling it out and having a play with it you know yeah yeah, hey, um, we got a question That's, from chat, um, yeah. which I was I was thinking similar sort of things as well as how you deliver this stuff to clients. Um, so Jackie says, with the small <coughs> variants, would you send those to the client as alternatives yeah. to be used on other assets? Yeah, so I guess I'd, I'd export everything like individually anyway. So mm. they'd all be high res, they'd all be like um, at scales to, to print all of them at a, a larger scale, I guess. But um, I would give them more individual assets, but I guess what I was going to say about this one, sorry, because that's directly related. So with this design, if I was going to give them a smaller version, we all know that if I scale it down, why is that at the top? It's going to get annoying. <laughs> and while I'm talking, I've, I've made all these additional layers, so it's the filing system went out the window. <laughs> you carefully, um, so, carefully planned files. <laughs> yeah, you know when you always talk about how good it is that like it's so neat and then you <laughs> just, I just lose it. So if I say I've got this design versus like, so if that's my small design, I'd probably like give them a, a version where it is very much like, I guess, what's the word, dialed back. So it would still have like all the features, but if I know they're going to do something really small, it'll be a really like a, a more simple version of this graphic. Mm. But again, I don't think this has made me have more more work to be done. It's just nice to give them. So I'll just like do a really dialed back version. And you're using like, so you're trying to make it simple and you're using like a thicker brush as well. It looks like. Yeah. Just, just so that it's like, it is a little bit more bold. Mm. Obviously when things get smaller, lower detail always works a lot, a lot better. But yeah, I would just like, so you'd have, let me just turn off these things. My screen is so big that I can't see. <laughs> I couldn't even see where my my layers were. It's like a good problem to have. You've got so much screen real estate. It's, yeah, check out it's check like, out Dale's Instagram feed as well, and you'll see the photo of him. It looks like he's working on a giant TV. We were joking about. It, um, it literally <laughs> looks like a TV. <laughs> it's massive. <laughs> Um, Johanna was asking, do you keep any of the unused assets for personal or future clients? Like, do you create like a library yeah. of illustrations to speed up your workflow or is everything drawn from scratch? No, I definitely have like a, a like a folder where like, well, maybe I'm just going to keep this little skull guy because he might come up in the future yeah. for something else. This is a really poor version of like dialing it back, but like it would be something like that versus this but still yeah. have all the same features as what this overarching graphic is just so that like they've got they they can pick and choose what works for them. I think it's really hard because you don't really know where their brain goes after they see things. Um, I've noticed in like just in all the years that I've been doing this, the client never really knows what they want until, oh, sorry. Yeah. They don't know what they want until they see what they don't want. Right. So, you know, I, I'll create all this stuff and they're like, oh, you know what, actually, can we try this, this, this? But if I've already drawn this in a, 
in in this style where it's um it's all illustrated components and and they can be um pulled out separately from each other then it shouldn't be a problem at this point when they start thinking of other ideas of how things can work like oh can we change the angle of the the razor blades it's not working well mm. that's fine because i've drawn it separate and i can just come in here and like you know change the handle direction and i haven't created like there's not a lot of extra work that went into it you know i'm just gonna quickly do the change send it over and there we go now we've got like two versions of it which one do you prefer um i think it's it's an easy way to um protect yourself from additional hours of work as well mm. um having the logo if i was like i said if i was to just trace this logo without being on layers then that would be fine i'd end up you know uh, and get rid of all this. So I would just start drawing it in like over this and only following my rough lines like this. But then I shoot myself in the foot because the second they say they want to they want to change something or they don't like that angle, I then have to delete in here or you know, it's, yeah. It, it, it's a clumsy way of doing it, in, in my opinion, um, unless they're rock solid on that's the only graphic they want, then I always, I'm always illustrating with, um, I guess, a modular design, let's call it, where it can be, we can flex wherever we have to and, um, and, and make all these alternate versions and things like that. That's cool. Hey, yeah. Jackie has a great yeah. follow-up question to this as well. How many changes do you allow for a client? Like, do you give a limit or does it depend, um, you know, depending on the time spent? Like, is it part of your quote? How do you think about that sort um, of stuff? It, I, I think my, um, my, my business model is broken. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, do you want some advice? I don't think, yeah, yeah can look, I, if, if someone can, uh, I just, sometimes I, I, well, for, for the longest time, I always have underquoted and, you know, haven't really thought about those sorts of things. Like what, what exactly does it change entail? Like what, where do you draw the line at changes? Um, mm. If it's an error, yeah, I'll change it for free because it's my fault. Um, but I, I try to keep it to like a three round minimum, to be honest. Or oh, sorry, maybe four. So I'll do the concepts, those really rough ones. Then I'll do. I'll get their feedback off that, and then my refined drawing is based off the feedback from that round. So yeah. then I'll do a refined concept stage. Once they're like, "Yep, that's cool. Let's go." Um, I'll do a third round, which is it would be more like I guess this one, uh, where it's just red. That would be red one. Right. I've got so many layers. <laughs> so you won't you won't put color in at that. At that stage, is that intentional? No, so I'll, this would be the third round. So yeah. the first round is that that concept where it's really rough. Then they'll give me feedback and say, hey, we want the spider webs and the drips put in. So then I'll redo this one, mm -hmm. get their feedback on that. And then I do the, the next round would be uh, inking it in and getting all the details, like more of the, the little details and things like that. Mm. Um, and then from that round that they, they can do their one change basically and that would be implemented into the drawing of the final round if if that makes sense so from this round uh sorry from this round the fourth round when they've got the artwork drawn in if they say hey can we put eyeballs and um can we change his hair to like a side part or something um then that's included in the change going into the next round if, if, if that makes any sense. So there's like four, but after that, once it's all dialed in, I try to, that's it. Like after this round, it's kind of, that's, that's what you're going to get. Yeah. But like I said, my, my business model is broken and <laughs> if they want more, I just keep going until like I've, I've literally gone, you know, bold from stressing out. <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> I just keep going because I just, I want to get it right. And that's, it's not a bad problem to have. I, I just think I need to be more um, more assertive with a, from a costing point of view. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, yeah, very, so it's often the hardest thing to do, isn't it? Because you know you 
balancing between oh. like your passion for the project because obviously you want it to you know even for yourself but also for the client you want it to be right you want them to be happy with it um but also i mean time is time is money though as well and like family exactly. time you got kids and stuff and you know, it can <laughs> yeah. be hard to like back in the day i remember when i you know before i had you know kids or anything i was living by myself i just worked like all the time because i didn't you know well yeah, that's what well, like, I, I, I think i uh, I think I kind of days. think that I'm still that person. Like, I still think that I can just keep working. Um, yeah. But I know that it takes a toll on on a lot of things, like mentally and 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 mm. physically. So I, I need to pull myself away from things. But um, I also think like it's nice to um, it's nice to deliver like a project with by putting a hundred percent in, not doing like a a ninety percent job. So I yeah. I don't think it's a bad problem to to want to work extra hours if, if it makes you happy at the end of it. But um, mm. I definitely think you need to yeah, like you said, be conscious that um, time is money, and it also the longer you spend at the desk, the the more time you lose for the little things. So yeah, try, try to make it worth the while. Totally. We've only but got yeah, like so ten minutes I've... left, everybody, as well. So if you do have any questions, throw them in the chat while we're here. Yeah, fire away. I um, I'm just gonna put all this stuff back in. Um, and with the typography, just while it's over here, again going back to using it as a, a guide rather than a than a font. Um, you might like the the shapes that are going on, but maybe you don't like this how the square just ends. So you can go in and add all the little. I don't even know why I'm drawing that. Just yeah. That's cool. So this is like the part where you've you've got like a font, you know, that you've stretched a little bit and kind of moved to yeah. the the shape, and then this is like you're making it your own, adding a little bit of yeah. flavor to it, you know, based on the illustration. Yeah, and just, yeah. Yeah, and kind of making it your own. Like I don't think there's any harm in you know utilizing the bones of of these fonts, like as long as you're not trying to you know, use their font exactly and claim it as your own. Um, uh, I just think it's nice to have a starting point. Not everyone's um, typographically skilled, I guess. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's nice to be able to like open a font and, and draw some kind of inspiration off it, I guess. But yeah, yeah you can cool. go in and add all those, all the little details that you want. It adds so much than like just picking a font out. Hey, so when you're, yeah. so you know how we were talking about, I mean, we've got like a billion fonts, like, um, yeah. slight exaggeration, like with like Adobe yeah. Creative Cloud. If you have a client who, you know, they're not a designer, they don't have Creative Cloud or something. Like, do you try to pick like a pretty standard, like, do you ever suggest like a standard font to go with them? Like, you know, you've um, got this, you've done the lockup, but then I noticed in the, the one on your website that you used, there was a bit of type, like it was an example of it on a website. Oh, yeah. Would you be like, hey, I really recommend you use this particular font because it matches really well? Like, Yeah, I'd always, uh, it's hard. I think they have a lot of, uh, the clients have a lot of faith in like you as, a, as an yeah. artist. So they want you to take the reins a little bit. No one really ever suggests like, oh, hey, do you think I should have this font or should I do it this way? Mm. Um, I think you need to... <coughs> I think you just need to be conscious that like these fonts, some of them are like, depending on usage, they do cost and can cost a lot as well. Mm. Um, it, it, so I'm always very like conscious of that sort of stuff um, and where they can and can't be used. If I'm doing something a bit more, um, I guess what's the word, like large format corporate stuff, um, I usually let them take the reins on like fonts that are used because they usually have to purchase those or whatnot. Um, mm. But for these smaller guys, if it's a cool font, I usually do stuff like this where it's just going over and and creating something cool for them based off something they like. Um, I'll, I'm just going to flip back to that screen, Flynn, to the Old Reapers. Oh, yeah, cool. There it is. So this Old Reapers, this Old Reapers font um, was based off like an old an old font and he liked the um creature skateboards obviously their logo so we just 
we got a font that was similar and then we created it to replicate it but it's it's mm. not the same font if that makes any sense so yeah it's got the same flavor and the same vibe but that's that's not a font that we can typeset so if i've and going back to creating it in layers so this or oh, reapers was always able to come out and be pulled across like this mm. so I, I was always conscious of putting and i know there are fonts that are very similar to this reapers but I would try to do as much custom as, as possible. Like this barbershop and shaving parlor is not, that's, that's the font of the system. Um, but for the most part, yeah, I'm always trying to do like a little bit of like custom work to a, an existing font or using, like I said, using it, just the bones of the font, I guess, um, like, like this. So then when I take it away, yeah, you can definitely see the likeness in this, in the characters, but if I put like, you know, drop shadows or some line work around it. It's it's becoming its own, I guess, its own style of font. Mm. And I guess that's where the illustrated part of creating the logo is. Like it's it's an illustrated logo because for the most part, every single part of it is illustrated. There's not going to be a lot yeah. of um, design elements like fonts or um, you know downloaded stock imagery or anything everything's completely custom i guess yeah i guess that's where it's different to creating a a, a corporate logo mm. per se yeah for sure but yeah that's that's kind of the that's that's kind of the 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 bones of um creating like a logo a lockup and having it illustrated so that you can being illustrated you can pull it all out create a few different versions of that logo and and still not have spent you know heap more hours creating a barber's brew typography only like everything's being considered in the design along the way so you know you might want to pull these drips out and put them over here underneath like you've got all those elements that can be included into this because it's all a part of your original concept and like i said the client would appreciate it i i think if i was a client and i got a few little extra goodies when i got my you know the files dispatched over to me i'd be pretty stoked exactly yeah exactly i think it, i think it's put yourself cool. in their shoes and yeah. the way that you've created yeah and as you said like the way that you created originally it's not that much more to expand it out and you've set yourself up no. like you've set yourself up if the client does come back you can make those those changes just a really smart way way yeah. to work um you, yeah and getting more and value it's, the less time to the client and you well exactly yourself. and yeah. you look good down the track you know clients appreciate little gestures like that um yeah if it doesn't break you to do a few little extras and all you had to do is pull them across from a a, a major artwork over here then really you haven't spent any more time but you've done oh like a heap more for the client then you actually know they've got more more ways to utilize that design that they've paid x amount of dollars for and instead of just this one they're getting like a few little extra ones that will help them along the way so i i don't know i think that's a it's a pretty nice gesture to just get you know get in the habit of yeah oh that's cool hey guess what yeah. we are we are pretty much out of time it goes fast oh, that good that's yeah it definitely does <laughs> <laughs> um, as, as always I, I, I knew I wouldn't get it finished but that's cool <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome man we'll have you back on um, for sure there were some suggestions in chat about um, would love to take a class with you um, showing us oh, like cool. the nitty gritty of using brushes and stuff like that so maybe we can, maybe we can cook something yeah. like that up for the next time okay cool yeah definitely that's super fun thanks everybody for the questions um been great hanging out with you today we hope you're having a um you know hope you're having a lovely day and thanks for spending some of it with us um dale it's always a pleasure hanging out with you thank you very much thank you Flynn. and thanks for thanks for sharing i learn a lot of stuff in there and i mean we hang out all the time like here like digitally <laughs> um but i still always yeah. learn something new every time we're hanging out every time we have you on the stream so I really appreciate that's, you. that's all that matters thank you Flynn sharing your skills man um thank you everybody <laughs> and uh we'll be back next week so we'll see you then thank see you, you. cheers see ya